Well, one thing uh, that we're going to do before we do anything down here is get rid of this water. Do you remember in a previous uh, episode we talked about um, one of the best things you can fit to your Land Rover Defender and it is a genuine mat and this is the reason why. Look at all of that water that would have otherwise gone either into my carpet or actually started to rot um, the footwell. Now even though we've done some remedial work, we've obviously fitted new door seals, new window seals or the windscreen seal, um, it's still letting water ingress in quite a bit and I think it's probably coming from this area under here unfortunately um, which we're going to have a look at in a future episode but for now I'm going to tip this out um, I'd normally do it with two hands so if it goes wrong which it might there we go that's quite a lot of water you wouldn't want that in your vehicle or in your carpet so that you know it's just so important to have one of these mats and I'm pretty sure that Land Rover in their wisdom lack of wisdom I don't know which it is but I'm pretty sure that's why they made it the way they did um, so you can collect your water and you can chuck it out of your vehicle well guys although this whole video was based on uh, accessories that you can fit with the aid of just a screwdriver um, I wanted just to fit also uh, another item which does require one additional mm, that's a lie two additional uh, tools but uh, I figured you wouldn't mind because it's a fairly simple procedure and uh, it's definitely a well worth having product so we're going to be fitting the LOF clutch assist um, which is a spring that gives you 45 percent more power on your clutch depression and release so it makes the whole process with changing gear a lot easier and that's going to work in combination with something else we're going to fit in a future episode there's no instructions so i did obviously go online uh, to see if i could find some instructions and loft do do um some instructions on how to fit it but it is with a uh, a pedal box that's on the on the bench so i thought it'd be better to do it in the vehicle to give you guys like a bit of real world fitting advice you get a spring, the CNC machine top hat washers. You also get these uh, U washers, which is a Land Rover part. They're quite brittle apparently, so we need to be a bit delicate with it when we're gonna fit it. So they say that we can do all of this with 17 mil, and that's for the, uh, the stop bolt in the engine bay. A pair of vice grips, so I've got needle nose vice grips here, um, and, a, and a screwdriver, but I don't think we need the screwdriver, that's just for pushing the bushes in. So in our TD5, in the engine bay, there is our clutch cylinder housing and the bolt that we need to wind off is right down here so we're just going to wind that off a few turns and that's going to enable us to get the pedal as low as possible it's already quite low so i don't think it's going to make too much difference but we'll do it anyway yeah there we go that's the top of the pedal and you can just see here we've got uh, the notch in the arm where we're going to be putting our U bush and then at the top here these two plates here and here are where the spring locates so it is easy to get to once you identify exactly where it is I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to let the uh, pedal come up <sighs> because it's easier so I can now reach that clip area pretty simple pop it in there I'm just using the spring to oh, it's quite tough let's have a look so I'm pulling the spring in there we go did you hear that little click and that's how it goes in and that's actually how the spring does locate in so if you want to leave it like that you can uh, next thing we're going to do is push the top hat washers into those two positions on the housing but the trick is to get the left hand one in you want really the clutch pedal up and it's easy to get access but for the other side I found it easier to get access with the clutch pedal down and then I just used my vice grips just to squeeze those in because they are a tight fit we have actually removed uh, the little tab that sat on there by putting some vice grips on there and just working it up and down until it fatigued and it came off and you need to do that to enable you to get the uh, top of the spring located into either side of these so um, we've got all the bushes in place we're going to use two people so obviously it does say to compress 
the clutch pedal with a bit of wood or something against the pedal box, but um, I'm going to compress it and film uh, to give you the best view while Steve installs the spring. Oh, that was just by, has that gone in? Yeah, don't move. If it's gone in, that was just by sheer luck. <laughs> I have to move my leg a little bit, guys. Sorry. Are you in? Nailed it. Let's have a look, Steve. What have you done? Just have a finger in the pedal. Was that when it did what? Back. Spun really. That's a nice blister. That'll burst a treat. Well, I can't thank you enough. You can have glamorous assistant status thank once you again. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Clamp that and bend it in. There we go. And bend in. You see that? So that is what you're left with. Okay, so we did get the loft spring in pretty easily, um, but a couple of things that will make your life a lot easier doing it because I'm not sure it's as easy as they make out on the instructional videos. So I'm just being real with you here. Um, Steve obviously did the fitting at the end and I just sort of filmed it. So thanks to Steve for that. But he found that it was much easier to use a set of long nose pliers rather than the mole grips to actually manipulate the spring into the top hats. Uh, the reason he said is basically once you've clamped the spring with this, you can't let off at all to manipulate it and move it around. Whereas you've got enough strength in your hand using a long nose pliers, you can actually get a grip release it, move it, grip it, release it, you know, and you can actually work that, that spring into the top hat. But to be completely honest with you, um, because at the end of the day, there's no point not being honest with you. We might as well tell you how it is and because it would save you guys a lot of trouble. When we first tried to fit that spring, I'd forgotten to actually remove that little tab piece of metal on the clutch arm. <coughs> and, um, you know, we got one side in and then it was just, Steve was like, it's just impossible, I can't get the other one in. And I suddenly remembered that you've got to remove that piece of metal, that little tab you have to work up and down until it fatigues and snaps off. If you don't do that, there is no way you're going to get that pin uh, to dough into the, to the top, both top hats. You're just not going to be able to do it. So don't forget, like I did, to remove that piece of metal and your job will be a lot easier. Uh, use your pliers, but don't be fooled. You can't really do it with your thumbs. It's just, it might be easier on other models. Um, so there might be more movement on a 300 TDI possibly or a Puma. You might be able to get more um, depth on that clutch pedal. Remove your mats, because that's going to help, because obviously you could be able to remove your mats and push your clutch pedal in as far as possible. And actually having two people do the job, even though you'd think there wouldn't be as much room there, you know, if you do the clutch, if someone sits in the, in the driver's seat, depresses the clutch um, with your right hand foot, this is on a right hand drive vehicle, just sort of on the edge, keeping your leg out of the way, like I did, and you can see on the camera there slightly, it means you can really depress that clutch, you can keep it nice and rock steady, and then someone can come in and do that for you. But if you have to do it on your own, yes, you can use a piece of wood, it's not a problem, but just be cautious, because you might just knock that bit of wood out when you're doing it, and it's just a, a bit messy. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hardest uh, to fit, I would give that a seven out of 10. It's not an easy job. Uh, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of strength, um, but I think it's definitely well worth getting it in there um, because it's made that clutch so much nicer to use. Um, it really has. And if you're doing a long trip, um, you know, you're gonna really benefit from having that light clutch. Now, our next product is this grab handle from Britpart. Now, it's CNC machined out of aluminium. It's black anodized. It's a nice, hefty bit of kit. And if you've got the original standard A-pillar trim in your vehicle, you'll actually be able to just simply fit it in place and use it as a grab handle rather than your steering wheel. So it's a nice, easy fit. And, you know, the best thing about this, I think, is it's not just a flat handle. It's actually been machined and contoured to actually fit around the A-pillar, which means you get a really solid grass. So there's no movement in that whatsoever. Now you notice on here possibly that we've got the gloss A-pillar trim, which is another product you could consider if you've got broken ones in your vehicle. They come as a matte um, finish uh, out of the factory, but these are gloss and a little bit nicer and they do work well with this uh, CNC machine handle, but you can just see how nice it fits on there. If you, like me, you've got the sidestep, rather than pull yourself up on your steering wheel, you can just grab yourself 
a handful there and it's plenty strong enough. I'm 18 stone and that is not gonna move. That's not gonna budge at all. The only problem I have with it, and it's not its fault, um, is that I wanted to fit the uh, extra deep A-pillar channels onto my vehicle because I'm gonna have some additional wiring going from the front to the back. So I need the extra room in this pillar um, that's given by this uh, mud component here. So I'm gonna take this off quickly and show you just what I mean by that. The only issue is that you can't run, unfortunately, this handle with this A-pillar unless you sourced your own screws, which are even longer, but then you are sort of adding quite a lot of torsional stress. So unfortunately, you're gonna to have to choose, is it gonna be the handle or is it gonna be the extra deep channel? This is the standard one you have on your Land Rover, uh, out of the factory on your Defender, and this is the deeper channeled one. And you can just see how much deeper it is and how much more room you can get for wires. So I'm gonna tuck my wires into there first. Uh, it comes again with uh, extra long screws. And you should be able to get these started by hand. Don't want to over tighten them. There we go. Okay, so to replace our side repeaters with these LED versions, quite simply, all we have to do is remove the existing one. Uh, it doesn't need any special fittings or tools, but really just slide this uh, lamp forward and that'll allow you just to get a flat blade screwdriver underneath here safely without damaging your paintwork and prise it off. So simply unclip your old indicator lens unit and the new one is exactly the same bayonet fitting. So that just slides straight on easily. And then you quite simply just refit it the opposite way. So you've got these two barbs here that sit into the body first, get those positioned and then you just wanna push down. And what you'll see is this little clip here will spring load onto the body to keep it nice and secure there and that is fitted now on the driver's side or the right hand side of the vehicle you actually have to pull the light uh, fitting backwards to release it so just slide that back then use your screwdriver just in there and it pops out now it's important to mention if you are going to fit led side indicators because they're led and they don't offer resistance you're going to need a flasher relay that's suitable which you can uh, buy and i'll put the description below here and it's also linked down in the description but uh, the reason it works straight away on ours is because we actually fitted these led um, side lights already which comes with the flasher unit included so it's just basically a plug and play for us but if you're not doing the whole thing and you just want to replace the side lights get yourself a flasher relay that's suitable for the led flashes the last thing we're going to fit today with a screwdriver is a snow cowl. Now, you've seen these probably on many vehicles and they originated from the military where they were made out of metal. But over the sort of the years, they've been copied and fabricated out of plastic. Um, now, it's a great product for a few reasons. Uh, obviously, it prevents snow packing into uh, your air intake, which is what it's designed for. But because a lot of these air intakes uh, and the actual plastic fittings inside are quite old, what you'll find is, is the drain bung inside is quite often blocked up, which means that if it rains heavily, um, the water's not gonna drain out of there and it's actually gonna run into your heater air box and it's gonna start corrosion. So these aren't just great for snow, they're also fantastic for rain. Um, and I think they really add a nice look to the vehicle. Now what you find on a lot of vehicles, if they've had checker plate fitted like this one, um, whoever's refitted this cover over the checker plate hasn't replaced the existing screws with longer ones. And you'll find that this is only being held on by literally a couple of threads. So it doesn't take much to undo it. So it's a good idea straight away, look, to add those extra long screws. Let's have a look and see if this bung's blocked up. Yep, so I wonder if I can show you in there. So hopefully you can see all the muck that's in there. Now that is the air intake look for your heater. And just below it, all that muck there is covering up the drain hole. Now what that means is if it rains really hard, this is actually gonna fill up and overflow into your heater matrix. Uh, without question, you can probably see some tide marks in there as well. So I'm gonna clear that now anyway, just because I might as well, as we've got a bit of room. Once you've uh, got it all cleared out, just get your vent back on. You can put the original screws back in here if you want to. Uh, and then you simply just put your cowl over the top. Now these uh, longer screws actually screw through the plastic and into the, into the fixing.
It shouldn't crack because you've got the support of the original grill under there anyway, so you're just sandwiching everything together. Uh, there we go. And we have got our snow cowl in place. I think that looks really good. Well guys, that's it for today's episode and I appreciate it was just a quick and easy one for you guys. But for me too, because at the beginning of this week I actually had a really big day's filming and collecting a new project vehicle which is going to be the next episode on Tuesday. You'll be able to see what that vehicle is. And hopefully um, some of these little details will be something really easy for you to take on over the weekend. Um, it's funny because obviously I set about doing a nice easy video with things that you can just fit with a screwdriver, albeit the loft spring took a couple more um, tools, sorry about that. But the idea was just to sort of throw in a few really easy, simple upgrades you can do to your Defender. Um, but I was really thrown in the mix a little bit because some of them were actually quite complicated, not for the fault of the products, but a lot of the time I just had the wrong tools or I wasn't approaching it properly or the vehicle had old fittings. And, you know, it just goes to show that sometimes the simplest tasks, the simplest jobs can be a little bit of a mission, but it works both ways. Another time you'll have a job that you think is an absolute miserable thing and it'll just be the easiest thing in the world. So don't don't be put off if you're doing any kind of work on your Defender because believe me, everybody goes through it and we're dealing with old vehicles here so nothing's perfect. But the rewards are plenty and I think some of those products that I showed you today are definitely worth considering. I really like those deep uh, channel A-pillar trims. I think they're a really good uh, product. It's just such a shame that I can't use the grab handle from Britpart in conjunction with those because I like both those products equally. I do also like the LED lights we've added. I think they sort of give the, the vehicle a complement the the whole look we're going for a slightly retro modern touch uh, the snow cow was something i always wanted to fit um, it doesn't worry me that it's black it kind of again works in with the whole look of the vehicle and it's an easy fit and it will save you money in the long run believe me and lastly it's the loft clutch now i need to have a little bit more time on the loft clutch I haven't done uh, any off-road drive. We want to see how it performs and how good it is. But it definitely makes driving in traffic and around town so much nicer in the Defender because it just gives it a much lighter feel on that clutch. Um, and if you're just in stop-start traffic, it's just so much better than having the original sort of heft of putting that clutch down and releasing it. And you know what it's like. If you've got a Defender, you know where I'm coming from on that one. So for 20-odd quid, it's a really good upgrade. So with the loft spring in place, although the clutch pedal movement was much much easier it wasn't quite right and if you're like us you're probably going to want to have to fettle around a little bit with your clutch position but it's quite easy we spoke to the guys at loft and they said you just simply take um, the lid or the cover off your clutch box um, it's got six bolts you remove that and it says down here um, just check your master lock nuts uh, it sounds like the pedal may need lowering a little on the master push rod and what that means is the pedal won't then come up so much because now it's spring loaded it's just going it's full travel whereas before because it's an older system it would have only been come up a little bit so it's too high now so what we need to do is actually make that adjustment and also we're going to adjust the stopper screw so we're just basically containing the movement of the clutch um, a little bit because obviously you've got full movement on it now because it's pre-loaded uh, and then when we get that sorted we'll do another little review of it how it performs off-road and give you some feedback but all in all yeah a great little product so thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate all of you guys who have subscribed. So if you haven't, please do click the button and do give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video and I'll catch you on the next one.